The I-Team has investigated more than 2,000 incidents involving hundreds of police and corrections officers from 40 local police departments. One of our goals is to examine how local police departments police their own and what happens to officers who violate policy and in some cases, the law. Michael Holloway has worked hard to hide his pain. I took three or four days off work after it happened. Holloway says the chronic pain in his injured arm and spine got worse soon after he arrived at the Middletown Jail in February of last year. He was greeted by corrections officer Calvin McIntosh, who had 28 use of force incidents in the last four years, more than double the total of the other nine corrections officers combined. He said, I hear I am the effing law. Holloway would become number 29. Holloway arrived at the jail after being arrested on a warrant for a petty theft charge. On the video, you can see McIntosh's hand near Holloway's injured neck, his other hand pulling back on Holloway's shirt. Holloway says it was extremely painful. It's not right. That was BS that I went through. Then, according to an internal police investigation, McIntosh pushed Holloway into the cell door and into the cell. In the cell off camera, Holloway says McIntosh punched him several times in his neck and injured spine. It hurt bad enough I was crying. You know, I mean, it, it literally put me in tears, put me to my knee. According to the jail video, McIntosh was in the cell alone with Holloway for 25 seconds. When he left, McIntosh slammed the door so hard it bounced back. I'm thinking if, if I do anything at that time, my life's in danger. A Middletown police internal investigation concluded Holloway never resisted McIntosh, was no threat to the officer, and that McIntosh used unreasonable force. The police department determined McIntosh was guilty of administrative charges of conduct unbecoming and courtesy. The police department suspended him for a day and allowed McIntosh to use holiday pay so he wouldn't lose any money. The year before, he was also reprimanded for his use of force. It's an outrage. What he did, he, he should have been charged with, with an assault with intent because he did everything he could to make sure that I was in pain and make sure that I was hurting. How do local police departments respond when their own officers are found to have violated department policy or in some cases, the law? To answer that question, the Nine on Your Side I-Team has spent months examining internal police records we requested and obtained from 40 police departments serving the tri-state, focusing on law enforcement incidents in seven Ohio and Kentucky counties. The I-Team discovered that not a single officer found to have used excessive force was charged or fired. In this incident at the Hamilton County Justice Center, the only use of force considered excessive was this roundhouse punch. The I-Team's investigation also found that theft, domestic violence, and assault allegations made against local police officers by their own departments were forwarded to the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office, but no charges were filed. In one case, an officer was allowed to retire instead of facing criminal charges. As the I-Team first reported in May, Hamilton County Corrections Officer Jason Mize pushed a 61-year-old inmate headfirst into a concrete block wall a year ago, left him moaning in pain, then flung the cell door so hard it didn't close. An internal investigation found the inmate was bleeding profusely and had a broken hip. He was facing termination. Um, it never happened uh, because he resigned. The sheriff's office referred that case to the office of Hamilton County Prosecutor Joe Dieters, which declined to present it to a grand jury. The sheriff's office did everything they could possibly do and went through every phase of the process and it was turned down by the prosecutor's office. I can't change that. The Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office also declined to file charges against former Blue Ash Officer Chris Zelensky and ex Colerain Township Sergeant Joseph Redmond, who repeatedly used a confidential police database to get personal information about people who were not under investigation. 
Prosecutors in Ohio and other states have filed felony charges against officers who violate that trust. But the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office declined to file charges against both officers who were forced to resign. Redmond was an adjunct instructor at the Butler Tech Police Academy, but he resigned last week after the I-Team contacted him about this story. Back in Middletown, the I-Team showed up at a recent city council meeting after Police Chief Rodney Muterspall and City Manager Doug Adkins canceled an on-camera interview with us. The chief wasn't there, so we approached Adkins during a break. Why did you back out of the interview? We're not going to do this, so I'm not going to Michael Holloway says the city of Middletown and its police department have not been held accountable for the way he was treated in jail, even denying him a copy of the investigation and how they responded to it. There is supposed to be a, a, something in line that police is the police, but it's not working. One month after the incident with Michael Holloway, former Middletown Corrections Officer Calvin McIntosh got a pay raise for his continuing good performance. Five weeks later, in April of last year, McIntosh resigned. McIntosh, former Blue Ash Officer Chris Zelensky, and ex-Hamilton County Corrections Officer Jason Mize did not respond to requests for comment. Former Colerain Township Sergeant Joe Redmond told me he's made mistakes and does not plan to be a police officer again. And the Hamilton County Prosecuting Attorney's Office declined to comment on the specific cases that we mentioned in this report.